Hi everybody. So today we are outside and one of the things that I wanted to really talk to you all about today is container gardening. It's come up a time or two before but a lot of people will always say well I don't have room for that or I can't do that or I don't have the stuff. I'm going to be showing you my container garden today and realize I live in the mountains so even though it's the first week of June it was 30 some degrees last week so I'm really just getting mine started. The whole point of growing your own is not necessarily to save money but it's because you know what's in it. It's more nutritionally sound. It's fresher. How many recalls have we had on lettuce, on strawberries, on honestly just about everything and it's always way after the fact I mean don't you love that the last recall we had on strawberries here it is June they're recall recalling strawberries from March and April honestly that's way after the fact and I don't like that I would rather grow my own and know what's in it but first let's talk about what's possible a lot of us live in less than perfect situations. I don't own my property. I can't dig up a bunch of uh, the land and plant a big garden. So that means I need to plant in containers. Now I've had gardens for years and years and years. And so I'm totally comfortable with that. But let me talk to you about the way I do it. Now I'm going to apologize in advance for some of the uh, traffic noise, airplanes, you know, that's going to happen. We're outside. And I am less than perfect at shooting outside, so, but I'll get better. Just hang with me. <laughs> but here is some uh, video of my little container garden that sits out in this carport. In fact, it's right in front of me right here. These are my tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes I started inside right about March 1st. So, they're about 12 weeks old. They've only been outside for a week or so because, like I said, it stays cold here. Uh, I live at 6,500 feet elevation, and so I have to wait, but that's okay. It's okay if you have to wait. It's not a big deal. These buckets are your typical tractor supply buckets, the ones you get at Lowe's, at Home Depot. They're all the same. I put five or six holes in the bottom of this bucket, and I'm going to show you how I do that with my little drill. Uh, super simple. I just put a few holes in the bottom of the bucket so it will drain. Now the bottoms of these buckets are flat, so it's really important that you put them up on something so they can drain. You want that water to drain. You don't want it to just sit in the bottom of your bucket. So I put mine up on some old one by twos but you can also use contractor stakes. Now these stakes look like this. They're just your typical little wood stakes. And when you go into a Home Depot or wherever, they are always over on a wall somewhere out of the way because they're contractor stakes. They're not what you find in the garden department. Those are horribly expensive and they're not any better. These stakes come in multiple sizes from six inches all the way up to 48 inches. I just bought several packages that were 36 inch stakes. You get 12, or I got 12, for a little over $14. So they're about a dollar a piece. They're extremely sturdy. You can use them for fencing. You can use them to stake up your tomatoes. You can use them, as I have, to put under your buckets to help them drain. Now let's say you live in an apartment complex or somewhere where you don't want water draining onto your patio. In my carport, it's not a big deal. But if, it, but if it is where you live, then you can get those disposable metal trays, like at the dollar store that you would put in an oven, and you can put them under your buckets so you don't have water running all over. You don't want to have a container garden that ends up damaging where you live, especially if you don't own the property, you rent it. It's a condo, it's a apartment, whatever it is. You don't want to ruin things. And even if it's your own place, you don't want to ruin things. So take some precautions. It doesn't matter on this carport because it is in an area where it gets moisture anyway, so it's not a big deal. But be sure you put your buckets up on this. Now one exception, and if you have this option to use for a container, it's a great option. This is one of my uh, kitty litter buckets. Kitty litter buckets you can get for free from almost anywhere. If you know a humane society that uses this type of kitty litter or gets it donated, if you have a friend with cats, if you have cats and you use this type of kitty litter, these buckets are perfect. 
And one of the reasons is they have ridges on the bottom that are already elevated. They don't sit flat like one of the round buckets do. They are up off the ground about almost an inch, about a half inch actually. But it is enough for that bucket to drain if you put your holes right along that little uh, raised portion. And that's what I've done with this bucket. Those are perfect because you don't have to set them up on anything if you don't choose to. So if you can get a hold of those, they're usually free, so it saves you money in that way. You'll also notice, as you see video of my garden, these are there's an eggplant in my kitty litter bucket. There is, um, there are peppers. Uh, there are also some strawberries I still need to plant. They're just sitting in one of these buckets. Um, and then there's also a little cabinet, and this is an old, used, defunct little, um, basically it was a de decorative craft cabinet at one point that I have just used to hold dirt. When you're looking for containers, you can use an old tub, you can use uh, anything that will hold dirt that you can put holes in the bottom of for drainage. One of the things I also used was one of those nine hole cabinets that you could get from, well actually I think I got this one way back when at Kmart, when there was a Kmart, but you can get them at Walmart or wherever. A lot of you have these in, the, in your homes or you can pick, pick them up at a yard sale for next to nothing. They're really simple. You can, uh, this was a black one. And so you can see it's got nine little holes. This one is holding beans, cucumbers, uh, a few herbs, some basil. So you can use something like that. You'll also notice I have a little kitty pool. I took this little kitty pool, I put holes in the bottom of it, and it's gonna hold my strawberries, and I'll have more on that later. But these are just a few ideas of the types of containers you can use. Now let's talk about what goes in them. In these particular containers, um, I don't want them to be real heavy. I don't like heavy things. <laughs> Way back when, when I would um, do these sorts of containers, I would use rocks in the bottom. Yeah, you don't want to do that. That's really heavy. <laughs> these days, I will use wood chips, uh, pine shavings, old straw, anything. You know, normally I come out here and there's no traffic. Today, there's traffic everywhere. There's trucks. Oh my gosh. So just bear with me. <laughs> but in these buckets, I fill them about a quarter of the way full of wood chips or something like that that's relatively light. And then I will put uh, topsoil or potting soil that you would get from anywhere. Walmart, doesn't matter. I like to have something that has compost in it. A lot of times I will combine the really inexpensive topsoil they have with hummus and compost. I'll just combine the two, mix them together, and that will create a good enough soil. If you want to spend the money on potting soil, that's great too. One of the things you have to remember with these types of plants and with these vegetables is you'll need to fertilize them regularly with plant food, not just fertilizer. And here's the reason. Plant food has micronutrients and all the things that are going to make your vegetables taste good and have nutritional value. If you just use fertilizer, um, a lot of times it doesn't have the... Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> a lot of times it doesn't have those micronutrients and you'll need to do it regularly. So follow your directions on your fertilizer. Um, I will link below to some fertilizer that I suggest that's organic, uh, that has those micronutrients, but you get whatever you want. One of the things I also include is a little bit of mycelium. Now that is actually fungus. It's a, um, you can buy mycelium to add to your dirt. Uh, I usually add it when I'm growing my seedlings. But you can also use mushroom compost. I'm sure you've seen it at Walmart and Ace Hardware and everywhere. It has mushroom compost. That is good because that fungus works with the roots of your plants to help them uptake those nutrients. And that's really important for them to grow well in a container. Now you can see I've also started my drip system. It's not, it's not complete yet, but once it is complete, uh, I'll come back and show you my drip system. But if you're interested in knowing how to put together a really simple gravity-fed drip system, then comment below and let me know, and I'll be happy to show that to you. Uh, it works without electricity. It works anywhere. Um, it's really good for your plants, and it's easy, which is something I love.
But the point I'm making here is start with what you have. Start where you are. If all you have is a little patio, start there. Do a tomato plant, do a pepper plant, uh, grow some strawberries, plant a blueberry plant. And as you do these containers, each year you can refresh your soil with new nutrients, new compost, and go ahead and replant them. It's something you can do every single year. And once you get the hang of it, you'll love it. Now this summer, I'm thinking about doing a whole series on starting plants inside. Uh, I'm going, I am going to show you how to grow lettuce in your house, how to grow greens. I've been promising that forever. I'm finally going to get to do that. In fact, I'm about to shoot that video as well. So if you really want to see more about gardening, uh, more about uh, container gardening, doing things in your home, especially if you have a small place or somewhere that you don't own, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please click subscribe, and I'll see you next time.